Right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for attending the weekly Delphian meeting. So <clears throat> what we're going to do today is first we're going to mute the loud people, <clears throat> and then um, we'll go through our uh, regular market update. Um, you know, kind of quickly. And then, you know, Sean's gonna go through some more earnings, uh, Q4 results, and, um, you know, talk about some of those trades. So um, one thing, just like a general announcement, uh, right now we're planning on releasing Q1 2021 earnings plan in two weeks. Um, so that'll, That'll be, um, we're not gonna do the four hour seminar. Um, I think we have enough material on the YouTube and I'll show you that real briefly. Um, that goes through and <clears throat> so under our playlists on our Delphin channel, we have a webinar from Q4. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> these are the four hour versions and then we have the Q3 um, so we have two that you can go in and reference, you know, when we go through and explain all the different trades. So this will be more of a <clears throat> summary, um, kind of release for the, for the earnings, um, not so much covering every single type of trade in detail. So, um, <clears throat> I think there's, you know, two examples, so you can, you know, if you don't like one, you know, you can go to the next one, uh, you know, for ball crash or whatever. So. Um, so those are available to you guys online. So we're going to keep it, I think, brief, <laughs> you know, within the one hour type window. Um, and we're going to keep it in the same format. So, you know, we'll have open mic, you know, whereas we do those webinars, uh, it's just, you know, the communication is really one way. Um, so we're going to keep it like a regular meeting, um, same link, um, and, uh, you know, obviously send out the reminder for that. But just so you know, in case you want to try and make sure you're there for that. So, um, okay. <clears throat> so for, you know, the market update, uh, let me make sure I'm on the correct date. Okay, I'm good. So, <clears throat> yeah, we've had a little bit of a pullback. Um, you know, the numbers have dropped <clears throat> quite significantly. Um, as far as, you know, the state ones, yeah, we are up <coughs> around 77, excuse me. And <coughs> currently down to 64. Um, so quite a, you know, and they're pretty much all going to state two uh, for the most part, maybe a few fours. Um, not too much of a bump in the state eights, you know, from, you know, five something to seven. So no real movement there. Um, you know, we did have some transitions. Um, so, you know, the, the NASDAQ, which has been kind of lagging, uh, obviously the Russell's been leading in this market. Um, <clears throat> so those two have transitioned the two, um, you know, is that a forewarning for the other ones? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see um, <clears throat> as far as that. But, you know, we'll go and kind of dive into uh, the SPX. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, big picture, you know, we're about double the the average length in state one, uh, about double the move, <laughs> uh, average move. So, um, you know, where there typically would be a, you know, state two in the middle of this, uh, this one never, you know, flipped over and just kept going. So, um, you know, we had talked quite a lot about, you know, how T3, uh, as far as state modeling is our nearest term support, um, you know, what we talked about last week is if it could make new highs and we think it could keep running, uh, obviously it didn't, you know, drop back and then, um, <clears throat> you know, try to make another run up higher, um, having problems with these current, um, you know, these all time highs. So, <clears throat> so, so we got to watch. Um, I think the key indicator right now. Sorry. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. I think it's 
Steve. All right. I'm just going to mute you guys uh, if you're you got the hot mic. So <clears throat> if you have a question, just unmute yourself, obviously. So we did make, you know, since last week, we didn't make you know, new all time highs. Uh, we did dip and then kind of turned around. And, you know, what we had talked about outside of the modeling, you know, which we only have this T3 as our near term. And I think that's going to be like the trigger for state two if it gets down there. Um, <clears throat> it's the 50 day SMA. So I pulled up the 50 day. Um, and, you know, we had talked about this uh, for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to go through kind of briefly and map these on the market pulse, uh, you know, these little points. Uh, you know, where it either tested or you know, did a brief cross below. So I'm going to map those on, on the market pulse, but you can see we did once again test the 50 day and then <clears throat> bounce right off. Um, you know, ended up closing right above it. You know, and this is for SVX. So we had talked about that being, you know, a key kind of um, uh, support level as far as the Moving averages, um, that's the one that I found, you know, since this pretty much started uh, the turnaround from, you know, the Corona lows back in, you know, the March timeframe, you know, it's tested it many times, had a few breaches, very brief, obviously. And then, you know, recently a test here and then uh, within the last week, another test. So, um, <clears throat> So that's our, I would say, most important uh, near-term uh, support that we have. Uh, Winslow, you had a question? Yeah, I was looking at the Wall Street Journal the other day, and they use a 65-day average instead of a 50, but I think most people use the 200 and the 50. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people use different ones. Um, I've found, you know, and I did this analysis probably like three years ago. I was using um, the 50 and 200 for, you know, like, you know, crosses on the indices and, you know, it, it worked out pretty well. So I kind of stick with that 50, um, yeah. you know, but, but what I really do is, you know, I look at like moves, um, you know, so, you know, I kind of tried to figure out which one was mapping really well for this move. Um, you know, so I tried different ones, you know, I look at 30 and, um, you know, different ones like that. And the 50 just seemed to, you know, be um, kind of the main support for, for this run. So, yeah. um, you know, you can obviously check out different ones and see which ones are mapping the best and kind of use that. Um, I think that's the, the way to go. I don't know why they choose 65, you know, maybe they just want to be different or. I think, Josh, I think 65 is three months of trading days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if it's like 21, 22 trading days a month, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I just, 50 is a round number. I know a lot of people use it, so that you know, may be uh, not a good thing, but uh, you know, as far as this one, uh, this move, uh, you know, I think it, it, it's showing um, utility, at least um, for me, you know, so that's why I'm kind of showing it. And, you know, especially, in the, you know, we've been talking about this for uh, since I think before this. So, you know, it's tested it twice since then and, you know, proved uh, to be support. So, you know, that's kind of why I look at it, you know, okay, it's mapping as support. Okay, it's been tested, you know, obviously multiple times. So, you know, the more times it's tested and, you know, uh, bounces off, I think the stronger it gets until, you know, finally it does flop. Um, you know, at some point it's going to cross over. Um, when that happens, I don't have the crystal ball. So, um, so let's kind of take a look at these as far as like the market pulse. And I um, pulled up the dates. So if I did uh, one year. So the first one's kind of the first... I'd say test really was that uh, June 26th. So <clears throat> June 26th, um, I think it's June, right? Yeah, June 26th. Okay, so June 26th, um, we had uh, basically a cross, you know, um, 
So we had you know quite a few crosses here. So you know that that's a good warning. And this is state eights. Um, you know we can do it. You can do the same thing on state twos too. Um, I just kind of left it eights. Um, you know for the initial one. But we had a cross. You know it's so, so obviously you know kind of concerning. <laughs> you know it's down near the 50 day. You know and these cross over. Um, so you know we have been talking about this a lot. But we go down here and it's a flat line on lower lows and, um, you know, basically bounced off, kept going, right? Um, so, you know, even though it, you know, continued up a little bit higher, you know, we got no, no uptick. I mean, this is as flat line as you get down here, 20s, 15s, as far as the new lows and it's, you know, one year lows. Um, so, you know, if, if we go back, you know, when, when everything, you know, when it, when it hit the fan, you know, obviously we got those big spikes and I've been kind of advocating this more and more that, you know, checking out the lows as a confirming signal for, you know, uh, you know, market drops. So um, if we keep kind of going forward here, you know, this is where it actually did cross and turn up, uh, you know, the September. So if we look at September, you know, right around there, we had to cross, um, you know, we had fairly small, you know, uh, 200, no kind of sustained follow through. So we had a little spike, you know, that'd probably get you maybe a little worried, um, but, you know, no follow on, no follow through on, on the new lows. Um, you know, and it was the same story for, you know, over here in October. So if we pull up, uh, what was that date? You know, October 29th or so. So, you know, this one, uh, when the market started, you know, we had to cross below. It hadn't even crossed over at that point. Um, but yet again, you know, just not barely a speed bump, you know, as far as, you know, the flat line that has been going during this bullish trend the entire time, you know. Um, so we've had, you know, recent tests, uh, January 29th, beginning of February. Um, and, you know, we had talked through this. Uh, I think this is when we first really started focusing on the, the new lows, you know, flat lines again. Um, here, obviously, the most recent one, uh, which was the 26th, once again. <laughs> You know, not not a real cross, but we're getting movement on, on the state ones. The, the, the eights aren't really moving down here. I mean, this is, you can see here, you know, the, it was much more balanced, you know, between eight, ones and eights. Since then, we've really, you know, expanded out. And you can go back and find different examples of this um, throughout, you know, the charts to 07. But, you know, once again, nothing, um, no new lows, um, you know, very minimal. So I think even as we get this, you know, uh, we get like a 50 day cross, you know, I think if anything's really going to turn around, like correction wise, I think we'll, we'll start seeing you know, a lot more moving to eight. Um, and, you know, you can do the same analysis on two, you know, you're getting little bumps in two, you know, um, corresponding. I think this is the secondary confirmation of things. So it's like, okay, get worried. Um, you know, okay, I'm not worried. You know, it's basically still flatlining. Um, <clears throat> so that's the kind of things that I saw. And, you know, it, it's really just telling us, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to keep making highs, you know, we make up sideways or stuff, but um, it's not telling us that we're, you know, imminent fall right now. Um, I think we'd look for kind of um, at least some kind of movement on these. Um, as far as the lows, not, you know, 100 or 200. Um, you know, we want to see kind of sustained movement. That would be, you know, these markets, uh, you know, they drift higher and then <laughs> they crash down. You know, um, it's not, uh, you know, when we have those big corrections, they happen fast. So, um, so that's what we're kind of looking at here, not seeing any signs yet uh, of that crash. So that's the, what I check every day. Um, now, you know, I added in the new lows as another, uh, you know, market indicator for me. So, um, you know, Russell's still leading, 
you know, up in Never Never Land. It didn't make new highs from you know the, the last week that we had talked. So um, it's not mapping quite the same on the 50-day SMA. So I just stuck with the the. Um, I'm sure there's one. You know, you could pull up the Russell and kind of tweak that and see which moving average this one's. Um, you know, providing support throughout this move. Um, but yeah, I just went with this since we already had it and we've been talking about it for weeks, so. Okay, that's kind of fast. Um, I'll, you guys have questions on any of that? No, has anyone been doing, uh, I haven't had time. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a lot of, uh, you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of improvements in the platform. Uh, to make things easier, uh, we're doing a whole new layout um, that'll be rolled out in the coming months. Um, so like navigation, everything, we're trying to make it much easier, simplified. You know, we have so much data, but we want to simplify it so, um, so it's easier for people to navigate and utilize. So that's coming, you know, and we're, you know, working day and night on that. So, um, but what has anyone gone into like sector analysis? Um, I haven't had much time. Um, I just didn't know if anyone had kind of dove into the sectors. No, but I'll take a look at that for you during the week here. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for the, uh, the heads up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you're a big tech guy. So, you know, as far as following those, so you, you know, you can pull this up, you know, you can check oil that's kind of been moving lately. Um, you know, and you can map it against different ETFs. You know, you have, um, you have, uh, you know, if you pull up technology, then, you know, you can map it to SPY, you can put in XLK, um, you know, any of the ETFs. So it's ETF only here. Um, so, um, you know, you can try and map them to different things and see, okay. You know, I mean, generally we're just looking, okay, is there, uh, canary in the coal mine as far as sectors you know overall market is there one that's uh, you know really strong uh, things like that so um, yeah any you know more eyes we get on things the better um, you know and we Sean and I had a call with Bob just about um, kind of pre-runners and you know we had some really great ideas as far as like secondary type indicators so we're going through and you know hopefully we'll, we'll be uh, you know Bob lets us, we'll eventually, you know, if we find really good uh, merit with those, which, you know, I think we will, you know, we'll push those out to the group. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for good input, more eyes. Uh, and as you guys go through things, if they don't make sense, or if you have good, ide you know, ideas on things to add, obviously, you know, please reach out to me or Sean. So, um, so I think that's about it. Sean, you ready? Can I ask yeah, you a quick question ready. before you jump okay. into Sean there? Yeah, sure. Uh, you were just talking about sector analysis. And uh, yeah. quite often I have kind of run into a situation where I'm, I'm doing research on an idea or an angle or something. And I wondered about maybe a couple of stocks that I think are in the same group or area. And I've often been curious as like, okay, so these, these, these couple of few stocks, uh, what sector are they in slash what index of what sector i mean because you can find a stock that's in a, a sector but it, you're curious is that in the s p 500 or the nasdaq or the russell which which is you know with, like you said i haven't experimented with what you just said and that's the reason why i kind of go look through there but um those are questions i i come up with quite often it's like okay now because uh, then i if, if i knew the answer to the the question i'm asking myself what what index are is that little group of stocks in then i would try to see if there's a correlation between that individual stock or that little group and the index whether it's the russell or the nasdaq or or the s p yeah uh, uh, i think you can you know in the screener if you want to see the, the you don't have to answer it now i just that's the, the question i would have that, so don't take the group's time i'll, I'll we'll explore but that's the reason why I will take a look at that's the motivation behind the, well, my curiosity of the new the new uh, stuff that you're putting out. Yeah, well, I mean, if you put, you can pull it up here. I'll just show you quickly. Computers, technology, you know, all. So we're not doing industries; it's just sectors. And if you look all symbols, you can find out. Here's all. Here's everything in there. Um, 
uh, as far as the symbols. So, uh, you know, that's your big list. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I think you can, you know, this constituent signal, I think you can say, okay, I just wanna, you know, how many are in SPY um, point? Um, yeah, you're going from the top down. I usually th are thinking from the bottom up, like, well, here's an idea. Maybe this is uh, something that just came on, uh, you know, the uh, you know, yeah. Trader TV, and they're talking about a new company that's like in this particular area. So it's like, oh, this is like, now I know the stick, the ticker. I know this particular company. Now, where does it fit in? Does it fit into which industry group, which index, uh, and that, that sort of thing? So right. More from the bottom up. So yeah, so the big list there's 72 and it's in the spy um, out of you know, whatever uh, 512. So it's yeah, I think that's a really good tool, by the way, just the way it was, or you know, from 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 the starting point. So thanks yeah, for that. thanks for that. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think too, Dave. If you have a list of stocks, if you have like a list of five stocks or 20, I think if Josh. Yeah, instead of using the all symbol list, you might be able to put in your symbol list instead of the all symbol list and then run those in that screener that way. And then that might pull out your percentage in each of the ETFs or indices. Yeah, yeah, you can find out. So if you have a list of like five, just add them to a stock list and then use that stock list instead of one of the defaults or the predefined that we have in there currently. And then you'll be able to scan those five and, and maybe find a weight that way that might help you. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right, Sean. All okay. Right. Yep. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, like Josh mentioned, um, yeah, I'm going to run through some of the earnings results um, and uh, and show you guys some of those in the virtual portfolio. I have about half of them done. The other half I'm still working on. So um, as you know, if you've done some of this within the virtual portfolio or anywhere else, um, what I've been doing is if I go in there and start pushing through some of these results, then it kind of leads me into thinking about another scenario. Then I kind of go down that path and then revert back to redoing the virtual portfolio. So there's a bunch of different analysis going on at the same time. In my part, I kind of get lost in my own thinking and it's taking a little bit longer than expected, but um, you know, I do have a handful of them done. I want to kind of show you some of those. And then, you know, once I get them all complete, I'll make sure, you know, we all have um, the sharing of those so everybody can look at them. And, uh, you know, all of them will definitely be done prior to our meeting to when we're going to be talking about the next quarter. But, you know, I'm also trying to get this process done. So when we come out with the next quarter, the tracking of them will be a lot easier and uh, and more simple. Hopefully that's uh, that's the goal. So, um, you know, I know we've talked about the bullish pre runners. We talked about those um, on our last meeting. So I'm going to open up the bullish pre runners. Now we had a current position at that time that was open. Um, now it's closed. So we did have the uh, the workday position that was still open at that time. Workday had earnings come out, I believe, on 225 um, after the market closes. Um, so at the time when I went over this with everyone on the call, uh, workday was still open, like I said, and workday was actually at a loss of about 400 bucks. Um, I closed the position prior to earnings. And I thought it was here somewhere. Let me find it somewhere. I have it somewhere. I missed all this. Um, here you go. So I closed it actually on 225 because the earnings was that night. Closed it on 225 and took a loss here of 568. So I think when we had the report come out that Wednesday, the loss was around 400 bucks. So lost about another $165 on the trade. Um, so that's why you can see the portfolio that now um, has a total of 118, 153. So about an $18,000 profit, you know, versus the starting of $100,000. Um, and there's no other uh, bullish pre-runners coming out for this quarter. There were three more that I had pending. I'm going to pull this up real quick and show you. Um, this is the bullish pre-runner list. So there were three more that we had that were pending. Um, those three had just passed the time to actually start the actual bullish pre-runner coming into the earnings and the earnings are still estimated or at least that's the latest report that i had so those three are just knocked off my list because i wouldn't be able to get into them in the time frame that we've tested so as of today i put uh, current as of today three three zero trades open zero trades upcoming 
we had 68 trades missed due to the estimated earnings date. So it was 65, then those three uh, were missed, the, the ones that are upcoming now. Um, so that takes it to 68. 75 trades were completed at that time. We added in workday, so now we have 76. And then we can see of the 76 trades, 49 with profits, 25 with losses, two with break even. Pretty similar, 64% um, win rate, whereas last week or whenever I showed it last time, we had a 65. Uh, that one added winner took me to that particular point. All this is pretty much the same except for the portfolio value. It did drop a little bit, um, but everything else being equal, um, my losses did increase. My profits stayed the same. Losses, think, losses had increased, so that dropped my profit factor down to a 2.65. Was a 2.67, 2.65 with that workday loss in there. So that's kind of the summary, just a, a real quick uh, analysis of that. And, um, you know, after speaking to everybody or, or some people on the call um, and with others, you know, the results that they had for live trading were, were fairly similar. You know, maybe had they made a little bit more profit or, you know, they had a little bit less of a profit, but it seemed the overall consensus is that, uh, you know, everyone that I'd spoke to had a profit on these bullish pre-runs, which is great. Um, you know, obviously we're in a bullish market. The market is, you know, just rising and, and pushing higher as Josh had shown in, in those results and kind of flatlining now, which almost seems like it's the perfect time for the market to flatline based on these bullish pre-runners. Um, so, you know, we wanted it to flatline more so towards the end when we don't have any of these trades, you know, these trades ongoing. So, hey, Sean, you know, that's the, yeah. Sean, I think you're, yeah, not, I, I think when you're figuring profit, it's fair to use the, um, the max amount of capital at work as the denominator. That, get, that gets you up to a overall return of like 36% as opposed to 18. And I think that's reasonable. It, yeah, I don't, I don't, go ahead. No, I was saying, I was agree, agreeing with that, even though, you, you know, you have capital not, not at work, uh, you know, what it, the amount that you invested obviously is the key to that, right? Right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll use that as another metric too, Bob, to put in there also. I just use it as the, as the 100,000, so you're right, that kind of takes it down a little bit when we're talking about, you know, 100 versus 18, but I think using that, uh, using the amount invested the highest amount invested at any time is, is going to be a key as well to come up with a better a better analysis um yeah and there was a lot of capital remaining i think here this this still stands pretty pretty firm about fifty thousand dollars i'm hoping for the next go around i'll be able to either tighten that amount up um you know i don't want to get stuck in a position and i didn't want to get stuck this time in a, in a position in the virtual portfolio to where I had to exceed the hundred thousand dollars. I wasn't sure if using a minimum of a thousand in each position um, was going to cause that or not. Um, but obviously, with having this many trades missed due to the earnings dates being uh, not confirmed at that time, uh, that might be pretty close, right? If we're almost talking about fifty-fifty, you know, I might end up using another fifty thousand. I don't know, um, but uh, but yeah, we can we can talk about using a different way to figure that out based on the actual money or the capital at work, right? And I should be able to use that or use some similar metric with the results that I have and figure that out. So, yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to show you guys is I had, so again, I have this all in that, you know, Excel file, which we've kind of talked about, um, you know, this bullish pre-runner file here, which is what I showed last time. Um, it's actually opened up on a different, let me see, a different screen. So I have it all here. I did make the adjustments where I added in the workday position. So all of these are, you know, um, current. Now I can, like Bob mentioned, I should be able to take in, you know, maybe a cost basis value, add that up and then figure that out and then figure based on my cost basis or the amount of capital used and then do that based on the, the profits and the losses and come up with a different metric. But once I do that, I'll, I'll push that out there too. And you guys will be able to see that. Um, other than that, you know, there's some other ones that we wanted to look at, you know, the bullish runners, I'm still working on the bullish runners, as we spoke about, um, the bullish runners have a couple of different aspects to them. Most, or if not all of those trades should be captured, you know, within our analysis within the virtual portfolio, because a bullish, a bullish runner is going to say, you know, earnings data is today. 
So we're going to let the earnings play out tomorrow. And then the next day we're getting into the trade as a bullish runner and then we're buying it. So that, that earnings date should be confirmed um, and set at that time, unless for some reason they cancel the earnings or completely move them or, or something crazy like that happens. I haven't experienced that yet, but that is, is obviously a possibility, but those are, those are set. So the problem that I'm coming up with some of those is that I'm, I'm having to make sure that I'm exiting those at a certain number of times. So if we go into, you know, our shared file, which I know a lot of people have access to the shared file, um, or everyone should have access to that. We have those dates or those days listed based on the optimization that we've done um, with, uh, with our plan. So when we send that plan out, we have these files and we want to make sure that everybody is, you know, or everybody's looking at these files. You can look at the description of the actual trades themselves or the actual individual results that we've completed. So, you know, for these bullish runners, I'm making sure that I'm using these exit days. Uh, let me get back to the best trades here. Um, yep. So these are the best trades here. So there's about 76 of them. So I'm making sure to use these exit days as my day after my uh, entry. So if I enter in, you know, one day plus the earnings, I'm getting out, you know, for this YY, I'll be getting out 10 days later, 10 trading days. So those are just days that I'm mapping out. Bob provided a formula to help figure out, you know, the days, uh, from you know, pre-earnings or post-earnings getting out on a certain number of days. So I'm just using that formula, putting that in there, obviously making sure that uh, you know, our earnings dates are correct because these dates are static and not dynamic. So you know, once all that information is in there, I'll have that for you. Currently, if we're looking at this portfolio for the bullish runners, um, you know, if I pull up my earnings bullish runner, we can see that um, I have a handful of trades still open. So I have, you know, over 15 trades, I think it said still open. And then I do have, um, uh, I don't know the exact number of trades that are in there as completed, but we can see a lot of these trades that are completed are profitable. Um, and we are sitting at a profit for these bullish runners currently at about, uh, you know, 103. So it started again, portfolio value of 100,000. We're at 103, 451. Um, but this will be another one that I'll need to go in and look to see, you know, at any point in time, what's my highest capital at work? And that will give me a good basis of, you know, am I, you know, what, what amount of capital I'm actually putting out there to put into these positions? Cause I'm using the same setup on these as the others. So, you know, if I pull up my bullish, um, I didn't put the bullish runners in here, but uh, let's see, I thought I had that sample shown. So I don't see anything as of yet. While I'm looking for that, does anybody have any questions on either of those two right now or anything that I'm showing? Um, John, Nothing? are you going to publish that somewhere uh, in the share? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm just going to make sure I got most of the stuff as, as we want to have it, but I just want to run it by Josh and uh, Joe, a couple other people, just to make sure we're looking, I'm looking at it properly, make sure I'm taking something like Bob, you know, had just mentioned into an account and I'm not missing anything for you guys. Um, but, uh, but the plan is to share the virtual portfolio with you. So actually share this portfolio with you. Um, if you go into view portfolios, we have a shared portfolio section. So I'll share the portfolio with everybody on the Wednesday meetings. Um, the thought is that I'm going to share also, um, you know, my summary page, which is here. I'll pull up the non-movers now, but my summary page, so I'll share this with you, but just in a little bit of a different format, with the, but with the same information. And then also share the, um, share this one with you as well, which is the, res which is the results laid out. Same thing as the virtual portfolio, but just in an Excel format. Okay. Have you done any analysis as far as your losses? Like if there was a certain uh, industry or sector or anything further to find out, you know, why yeah, I haven't had, yeah, I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I think that's probably a good, a good metric that we could try to use to see if there is a, is a distinction between them. Um, you know, when we're talking about the losses and that's like what Josh mentioned earlier, when we got on the call with Bob, we were trying to look to see if maybe there's other indicators or other things that we can look at to maybe help optimize them, um, you know, optimize the trades. Um, so I haven't done that yet, but, you know, obviously I want, you know, that to be, known as part of this group and part of this discussion is that, you know, we, we have come up with the plan and, you know, we try to, you know, we try to do as much 
as we can with the plan before we submit it, but we don't want to get too crazy. We want to make sure it's broad enough to where everyone can utilize it. But then if there's certain things within the plan that, you know, you or others might think that they can make a little bit better, we definitely want you guys to use that creative thinking and use Delphian to try to figure out um, those ways maybe to optimize. And it might be to pull back the profit a little bit and maybe that'll help you get better results or, you know, expand the profit a little bit and maybe that'll help you get better results or tighten up the stop losses um, or use analysis to maybe see if certain sectors aren't performing as well um, or maybe certain sectors don't perform typically as well during earnings. I'm not sure. Um, or use other indicators, but those are always things that, you know, I would, uh, I would advise you guys to try to use if you can. I mean, we all, we all have, you know, we all put a lot of time into the platform and put a lot of time into the stuff we do, but if we can help each other, you know, maybe optimize it like that, that's going to be uh, hopefully a benefit for all. But I haven't, I haven't had time to do it yet. That's, that's part of the goal. And, and when I'm working on the virtual portfolio, I start looking at things like that and then it just, kind of start taking me down another path to where next thing you know, I'm, I've been looking at it for a couple of hours and I'm like, all right, hold on. I need to get back to the, to the task at hand because the virtual portfolio is having the results for you guys. is something that I've mentioned, you know, for at least two weeks now, and it's just taking a bit longer. So that's kind of my primary goal. It's just, Hey, let's get this thing done. And then we can maybe look at some analysis, uh, you know, further analysis later. Yeah. I was kind of curious as far as the rest of the group during their trades, what indicators or what they've been looking at to see that they've been, profitable, you know, additional indicators or we're just doing it as is. Does anybody have any any thoughts they'd like to share on that? Sean? Yes, sir. You know, just a, a quick response. The, the indicators that uh, you and Josh and I talked about on Monday, I think it was, we're really being used to um, decide whether or not to take a trade. We weren't using them to analyze the after effects of a trade, just to tweak whether or not we took a trade. And at least pictorially, that seemed to work pretty well. And I'm happy to share, I'm, I'm happy for you guys to share that or I'll do it if you wish. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, and, and so Bob had mentioned, you know, uh, there's a couple of indicators Bob's looking at, you know, um, to add those into, like he just mentioned, basically adding those in to help him figure out or help him possibly better decide if the trade is, if it's the right time to get into that trade at that particular moment or that particular day based on not only the bullish pre-runners setup that we have put in place, but other indicators in the market as well. And that was going to be one of my mentions later at the end of the call was that, you know, if, if anybody on this call has personal, you know, or, you know, personal live results that they would like to share with the group, they can always just give a brief summation of it, send it to me. And if there are summary or findings or different um, indicators or different methods that you might use that you think help optimize the trades for you, and then you wouldn't mind sharing that with the group, please forward that stuff to me and I'll, try to compose it and see if we can kind of share that with the group. Because again, we've talked about it before. I think using this group as a way to come together and collaborate with each other, I think is going to help us, you know, become better traders. You know, we, we have Delphi and this powerful tool to be able to use and find this analysis. But as we all know, there's so much analysis in there that I could look at one thing and Bob might look at something different. Josh might look at one other thing and since might look at something else, but if we can kind of find these good ideas come together you know, we might test those ideas and they might not produce better results. But if it does, then that might be something that we might want to implement if we can. And, uh, and then that might help our trading for the next quarter. But, um, but yeah, Bob, Bob had some great ideas. Go ahead. Yeah, I, think, I think next week, you know, <clears throat> if we have a lull in earnings um, in the following week would be uh, you know, where we're kind of publishing the plan where things are certain will, you know, at least start trickling in. Um, so maybe next week, you know, if Bob, if you don't mind, yeah, we can go through that because I think the more eyes on it, the better, um, you know, if we could just like cut out, you know, I think you can probably cover it in like 10, 15 minutes, right? Um, you know, I think that'd be good, you know, get more eyes on it, you know, um, as we tested, you know, I've gone through probably about 30 or 40 and it looked good. And I found uh, 
you know, what seemed to be the optimal setup <laughs> um, as far as you know, that, that MA, um, but I don't have the, the red green and, you know, I, I just had to kind of eyeball the trend anyway. So, um, you know, I think next week, if you're up for it, Bob, I think it'd be a good thing for the group, everyone. Okay. He said yes on chat. So, all right. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Bob. So we'll, we'll put yeah. that next week and let, we'll let Sean uh, carry on here. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and that being said, just, you know, if you do have some stuff that you want to update the group with or you wouldn't mind sharing, please you just compose it, send me an email. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just send me an email and I'll try to get it together and see if we can share it because I think it'll help come up with another as well. All right, so cool. So the non-movers, we know the non-movers are similar to the uh, the ball crush trades. We've kind of changed the non-movers from what we were doing previous quarters. Um, this quarter we have it basically as the stock doesn't typically move outside of a certain percentage range so instead of using the expected move we're using a percentage as that um you know width of those wings if you will so for the non-movers um you know again the first trade was on 113 non-movers are fairly easy to capture um we shouldn't miss any of these trades again because we're trading the non-movers on the earnings date um and assuming that you know after the earnings announcement the stock typically doesn't move that much outside of a particular range so these shouldn't be missed Currently, we have eight trades upcoming, zero trades missed, and we have currently, as of today, 28 trades have been completed. So of the 28 trades, 19 of them were for a profit, and nine trades were for a loss, so about a 68% win rate. Um, again, total portfolio value I used is $100,000, so similar setup as the other ones. Um, and then currently, as of today, uh, 106 and change is the uh, portfolio value, so about a you know, $6,200 profit on that particular portfolio. Um, you know, this investment was a thousand dollar minimum, similar to the other one, similar to the bullish pre runners. I used a thousand dollars as a base, but for these, I wanted to make sure that I was, my credit that I was receiving was at least a thousand dollar credit. So a little bit of a reverse versus paying a thousand dollars. I wanted to make sure I got a thousand dollar credit. So, you know, depending on the trade, I might have to do a one lot or I might have to do a five lot. It just depends. Um, and again, you know, for the non-movers, since they are a little bit of a different structure and we changed it from last quarter, um, I did not take the risk versus the reward ratio um, into account. So for the vol crush, we try to make sure we're keeping that two to one reward versus risk. Um, here for the non-movers, I did not take that into account. I just, for whatever the trade was, that's, that's kind of what I did uh, when I put the trade on. Total profits, total losses, we have them here. Um, and then I got a profit factor of 2.2. I did add some additional details, basically looking at my total credits. So the total credits that I took for all of those, you know, current night or 28 trades, excuse me, uh, $81,000 as a credit as a total and my total risk. So my risk on all the trades combined was $59,000. So obviously I didn't have all those trades on at the same time. So I wasn't risking 59,000 at the same time, but spread out and then adding all those risks up. Uh, so basically I looked at it as a return on risk of about 10%. Um, so the non-movers look pretty well. I mean, they work similar to the vol crush. What I'm trying to look for the vol crushes, I know we use the expected move on those vol crush trades. Um, what I'm trying to do is trying to just run some further analysis on those to see if I can find some better ways to possibly trade those um, and help us reduce some of the risk, maybe increase the profits or just make the trades better as a whole. But for these non-movers, what I did was I used it as I got into the trade before earnings and I got out the next day, no questions asked. So if it moved outside of the range or if it didn't, if I was at a dollar profit or a dollar loss the next day, I just closed the trade out no matter what. So that's what I did for these non-movers. Um, and uh, and again, I mean, we're, we're looking at a little bit of a profit there, which is good. Um, I can pull it up in the virtual portfolio as a non-mover. I have those listed in here as well. Um, so we can see we got uh, we got have no current open positions, all closed positions, and we can see the portfolio value as of now. Um, let me come in here, and then here's the actual spreadsheet as well. So I have a similar setup as I did for the bullish pre runners. Um, I have the setup here, and we can see the portfolio, um, you know, as such. And I have all the details. I just added all the different things up and kind of ran the analysis that way. So these are ones that I wanted to, to, to try to share with everyone as well. Um, so those are the non-movers. I know I'm going through them fast. I don't want to take up 
everybody's time, but we can see the non movers. And then as far as the other ones, so now um, the other ones that I have completed are going to be my bearish runners and my bearish pre runners. So as we know, the market is, is somewhat bullish right now. You know, we just kind of keep that trend going higher. For the bearish pre runners, there were not that many trades that were populated within the, um, you know, within the trading plan based on, you know, those win rates and things that we had posted in that shared file. So we can see based on the bearish pre runners, um, we have one trade that's upcoming, which is YY. Um, I haven't confirmed their earnings date, um, the earnings date, but it looks like as of right now, if it's confirmed, the entry will be around 3.8. Five trades were missed due to the estimated earnings dates, and only three trades were completed. So we can see as a total, uh, we have nine trades sitting there for the bearish pre-runners versus 150 or so for the bullish pre-runners. Um, of the three trades completed, all three of the trades were losses. So all three trades took a loss. So the win rate is uh, essentially 0% as of right now. So all losers. And then we can see the portfolio value started with 100 around 98535 and then the same same minimum thousand dollar investment came into play there if i pull up the portfolio for the bearish runners let's see uh, bearish runner uh, we can see it's pretty easy to look at uh was it the bearish runners that what i was talking about no i was talking about the pre-runners right So the bearish pre-runners, let's see. Sorry about that. Um, so we can see 98,535 is the, is the current value of the portfolio. Closed positions, all the closed positions have a gain loss. All of them have a loss. All of them are in the red. And I had to get out of all of these trades. Since they are the bearish pre-runners, get into the trade before the earnings announcement and then get out the day before earnings or the, the time before the earnings announcement. So all of these I had to exit based on that based on the earnings date coming to fruition. And we can see, you know, my loss on some of these 26 and a half, 65% on the Dollar Tree, and then EOG at about 33%. So even though we have the stop loss set as 100% in the back test, you can see that I'm still able to retain a bit of value on these positions, you know, even taking them right up to the earnings. Now, a lot of them have uh, some of the ones that uh, the Dollar Tree um, used a March expiration, but you can see LNG and then EOG used a June and July expiration respectively. So if you're talking about March 2nd or when we close the trade on into February, you can see we still have you know a decent amount of time on those options. So that's, that's where we're able to keep a bit of that value uh, once we get out of the trade, even though we are getting out for a loss. So you know it does skew it a little bit for this one uh, for the Dollar Tree, but you know, you can see the losses are minimized a bit based on the fact that we're getting out before earnings and we do have a bit of time left on those trades. So um, those are the, the bearish pre-runners. I'll show you the bearish runners. Um, the bearish runners, we still have some in there. I'll pull that one up and let me show you that real quick too. Um, the bearish runners, the analysis. So the bearish runner analysis is, is summed up here. Um, pretty similar. We have two trades upcoming for the runners, BJ and OK. OKTA. Okay, Zero trades are missed again because we're getting into these trades after the earnings announcement. I have 10 trades that are working or open and then 14 trades that were completed. Of the 14 trades completed, seven were for a profit and seven were for a loss. So currently, you know, looking at a win percentage of 50%. Uh, we can see that I started with a value of 100,000 and we're sitting at, you know, 93,743. Um, and then the same thousand dollar minimum uh, investment applies to this one as well. If I go into the, you know, the bearish runner portfolio, we can see that, you know, these are the positions that are open. And currently there's three that are open that are for a bit of a profit uh, or in the positive, And then the others are actually in the red. And now we can see for the closed positions, once that pulls up, we can see a similar setup here, you know, a handful were taken off for a profit, but then the ones in the red were taken off based on the fact that we came to the time to when it was time to close the position. So after the earnings announcement, whatever days were optimal for us to get out of the trade, those days are used to get out of the trade here. So um, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, I had a question right there for you, Sean. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead. Use, use the uh, long put strategy for all of those posts. Uh, you know, ones that are going to fall slightly after. Um, did you did you try the uh, um, put spread for a debit? You know, a bear put spread instead of a long put uh, in, uh, idea. I, I would almost think that might apply closer to. It that, it, what it might. Yeah, it might help a little bit. It's a little difficult on some of these because you are talking about a shorter, a shorter time frame between you know the earnings announcement and then when you're getting out of the trade. Um, so the puts are going to you know if if you do get a drop in that short period of time, just your long put should see a better increase in value than a than like a a bear put spread. Um, but we didn't test the bear put spread, but that would be something that that's possible for us. Excuse me, for us to test as well. Hey, Sean. Uh... Yeah, just a thought on that. Um, you know, we don't do the spreads beforehand because you know we're supposed, you know, probably getting ball rise with that. But it's a good idea that we can look at the spreads afterwards, um, possibly. You know, because that's where I was coming from, Josh. Exactly that. Yeah, you're you're right on. You're with me. Yeah. So that's something we can. Yeah. Look. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Put them in post, and then you know you could do them at A and C, and then we could also. You know, you know the optimal time to get out. I just think with the put, you might have to extend that time frame out. I don't know. We'd have to look at, yeah, the time on the options versus the time when you're supposed to get out because maybe maybe it won't matter as much uh, as it would versus the uh, the pre-runners. I mean, it definitely wouldn't, I think, because the pre-runners, you're off pretty quickly. So, yeah, so we can definitely test that. We didn't with this, with the plan, but we can definitely do that. Um, and then we can see with the... Um, the bearish runners, I just threw it in this one real quick because it, that some of them are still open. So we can see that these are the bearish runners. I copied them real quickly from there. And we can see if we're looking at, you know, our return here, you can see that the actual portfolio is down to 93,000. You know, that's why I like using this real quick because I can actually do an auto sum of my percentages and we have what, uh, not, uh, 10 there. So I can say auto sum this divided by 10, uh, well, whatever that meant. I don't know what that meant. I didn't mean time, sorry. Divided by 10, you can see that we're down, you know, on the open positions, I'm currently down about 22, 23%. And then similarly, if we're looking at my closed positions, um, I do an auto sum and then we have, uh, what's that, 14. So I can do an auto sum this divided by 14. So I'm down, you know, about six, you know, roughly almost 7% on my closed position. So I'm down on my closed, I'm down on my open positions. You know, I'm down, meaning I'm down money. So then we can see that that's why my portfolio value is down a bit as well. So, um, so yeah, I got all this. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Lee here. Do you, do you put in, a, and I think you do, an automatic closed position at 25%? On those, I do. Closing and, and on those, say again. Uh, do you put in a, a closed position when you open it so that it closes automatically when you've made 25% on your money, or do you close it manually? Well, the virtual portfolio ones, we do not have that ability yet to put that in there to do an auto close at 25%. So I do, I do put these in, I do complete these manually. Um, okay. So I come in here and I look to see. Now we did, there is an interesting way within the virtual portfolio of, of how you can look at that. Uh, let me see if it'll do it on my closed positions. So within your virtual portfolio, um, you're able to click on, you're able to, I can't do it here. So let me go back into a portfolio. Um, until I can, which one has some opens bullish? Give me one second, sorry. So some of these bullish runners, you're able to go in here and click on this value here, the value of the position. Yeah. If you click on that, it'll tell you if your target has been met and what day the actual target has been met on. So if this position uh, in or NRG had met its profit target of 25% on 225, let's say, or I just opened the position on 32, but let's say it hit it today, it would give me the date that it actually had met that particular value here. So then I would know I could go in and close it on that day. So 
Um, this kind of helps you do that, but they are done. They are exited manually right now. And again, you know, they're exited uh, at the end of day. So some of the data um, that I'm pulling into exit at the end of the day might be a little bit different from the data that you're using when you're doing them live. You know, if you're getting out at noon, you know, it could be better, could be worse. It just depends on the price movement throughout the day. Yeah, thank you. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping for the next one, I'll be able to incorporate something like that. I just haven't figured out the process. I got to speak to Josh and some others regarding that um, to be able to track it you know, we, we don't have the intraday data now to be able to track it within here. But, you know, when I do exit these positions, you know, if, if I was to close this position, I could hit close and it gives me the ability to input my price if I wanted to. So if I'm just using end of day, I'm just going to leave the price as the mid price for the end of day. But if I know I got triggered today, you know, at $2, I could obviously change that to $2 if I wanted to. Um, but, um, you know, that's a little more difficult uh, of a task as of right now. But, yeah, this one's pretty cool if you can click on it and it'll tell you and then you can say, oh, okay, let me go back a couple of days and I can get out of the position for that profit. So. so does anybody have any questions on these? I, I, I kind of went through it fast. But again, I don't want to take up a lot of time. I'm still working on some of those other ones. But, you know, again, the, the bullish ones are doing really well versus the bearish ones, which obviously based on the market win right now, um, you know, I'm hoping to have those other ones for you. I think uh, the vol crush is going to show some, some bit of profits, or at least I'm at a profit right now on those. Um, but, uh, you know, that's yet to be seen in more of a format. The vol rise, I'm working on those. And, yeah. And the movers, those are a little bit uh, different as well to put into the portfolio, so it's taken a bit of time. But any questions on on any of those guys? No. No questions. But okay. I wanted to say, you know, we might be coming out of this pandemic, you know, not too distant in the future. It'll be interesting to see uh, how how we how how quickly we get back to the normalized ideas that were pre pre COVID. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, all right. I agree. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, the mar how the market's going to react and, and and what it's going to do. I mean, you have a lot of different things happening right now, you know, as far as the market kind of moving a little bit sideways and as that coming down, you know, cryptocurrency is kind of on the rise. So it, it's really kind of an influx of, of what's happening and all these things are converging together. You know, like you say, post COVID will be interesting to see how how everything shapes up. Yeah, I think this this period of time is gonna, you know, kind of be like a, an inflection point for a, for the long end of our investment portfolios. You know, this is uh, I think this is one of those times where you know if we, we do good, we're gonna, you know, it'll, good will pay off exponentially because we're coming out of the unknowns. You know, so if we can, right. if we can do pretty good guessing or predicting from here, I think it's like. Pay attention right now, I guess, fellow, fellow investors. I think good things could happen. Right. Yep. And I mean, I think, too, you know, depending what it'll be interesting to see if we can get, you know, some of these, you know, some of these trades that are missing, you know, back into the completed side, because that's a big disparity on these that are changing based on those earnings dates. And I really didn't see much of a, much of a, uh, significance between ones that were, you know, moving dates back or moving dates forward. It seemed like it was a fairly decent mix between. And, uh, you know, if they're moved back, you, you can't do much about it. You're pretty much missing it. And if it's confirmed and it's not within the window of to do the bullish pre-runner, then you're missing that one as well. So, um, you know, so getting these, I think, back to normal or somewhat normal, I guess I haven't really focused on too much in the past, but getting this back to a reasonable amount, a reasonable number, I think will be crucial as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully help increase those profits on these trades. Uh, but that being said, you know, I just want to make sure again, you know, all the trades that, that we've put out there for the earnings to the studies, you know, those trades, you know, we, we put the basis there, but the goal is for you guys to be able to go in there and optimize them, you know, optimize them with a different strategy or optimize them with a different profit, different loss, other indicators, and, uh, you know, Josh and I, or at least uh, both of us are more than willing to help you, um, you know, do that if you find some good inputs that we want to put in there and see if we can test them further and, and try to optimize those results. Um, and then, too, just to repeat it again, you know, those 
personal results, those live results that you've, you know, any of you've had, um, sit here, Bob, anybody that you guys want to share, um, you know, share them with me and then I'll, you know, make a synopsis, share them with me. And then as long as we're good with, it, I'll share them with the group next week. But, you know, I'm looking forward to the new plan coming out in a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I think we got some great trades here, even with the market as it is. So, you know, keep, keep on the lookout and keep, keep going. So if you don't have any questions for me, that, that's all I got. All right. Well, thanks, Sean. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> you know, as we go through this new uh, earnings, if you guys have any ideas on how we can improve the earnings, uh, you know, obviously, you know, send us an email. Or um, you know, we have uh, quite a few ideas already. So, um, but if you guys see any improvements where we can do with the earnings plan, you know, please, you know, reach out. Uh, we'll be starting that in the next week or so. So, it takes us about a week to generate it. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, yeah. everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye. Cool, guys. Have a good day.